good evening sir my name is uh, vishal tiwari i'm a phd student here in iit roopar sir generally i see that in western countries people chase excellence whether it is in sports or science or technology or whether it is in uh, like social reforms or uh, like inculcation of democratic values on the contrary to this it is a general mindset that i see in our country like masses of the youth uh, running after um, securing a job and uh, after that uh, by marrying a boy or girl to further settle sir why do we indians fear to chase excellence why don't we have an like appetite to create or discover something new in the field of science and technology see um, all search for excellence hmm? involves the use of thought science technology this that whatever it is it involves thought india was extremely fortunate it discovered something beyond thought Hmm? and because it was beyond thought it could not be verified or examined it could only be surrendered to so india got something that put thought in its place that demonstrated that thought is not the highest thing that there is truth beyond human action that there is something higher beyond human action human achievement human thought human imagination human creation and this thing was discovered by a select few india was greatly fortunate and those who discovered it they in their compassion in their empathy displayed it handed it over relayed it to the masses and the masses said now we have something that is uh, that is beyond our action our aspiration Hmm? we have it and since you have it there is no need to aspire anymore ambition starts looking childish attempts to rise higher start looking futile hmm so the west had questions that it wanted to settle through thought the west went into questions of identities and existence and wanted to know what is going on and could never come to a final answer so it kept on moving if you look at western science it emerges from philosophy hmm? not too many centuries ago 
philosophy and science were inseparable. It's only recently that uh, science has emerged as a separate discipline. And philosophers are fond of saying that the settled and demonstrated and verified part of material philosophy is called science. So while sci philosophy is at the front of the battle against ignorance, science is the harvest that philosophy has already cultivated or the bounties that philosophy has already won in the battle. You understand? A battle is going on and in that battle there is stuff that you have already won that is already yours. That becomes science. And the questions that are still unexplored, the battles that still continue to be um, raging, to be live, those constitute philosophy. So the West had philosophy and the West used thought to settle philosophical questions. And that gave them science, that gave them progress. India, rather unfortunately, got the final solution way too early. And the final solution was that the world does not exist at all. What is the point in thinking? Even the thinker does not exist at all. And where there is no thought, there is no progress. Indians do not rely on thought. We have been cultured to rather rely on belief. That has become rather stupid today. But it originated from a higher place. India actually had people who had discovered that which is beyond thought. And because they had discovered that, the discovery showed in their life, in their eyes, in their face, in their actions, and people grew fond of them. India has loved its sages. And, and they, could, uh, they could see that the, the sage does not think too much now. And the sage is no more ambitious. And the sage is not asking questions anymore. And when you respect and love someone so much, when you admire him so much, without even knowing, you begin to emulate him. So even the commoners began to emulate the sages. And India has been such a spiritual place. There have been roaming medicants in almost every street. Monks and sadhus. You would find every village has a few of them. And the commoners would look at them and say, this man has certainly achieved something extraordinary. His being is the proof of that achievement. His love is the proof of that achievement. His selflessness, his fearlessness is the proof of that achievement. So India began emulating those people and that happens. That happens in admiration. But emulation can never give you the real thing. So those who had not even started thinking, they abjured thinking. India bypassed thought. India said, what is the point in living by the mind? The mind cannot give you much. And monks will come and declare, the mind is your enemy. Thoughts are its weapons. Do not go by the mind. The mind has to be silenced. The mind has to be in fact killed. You would have read all these things in typical spiritual literature, right? 
So India just dropped the mind. And by dropping the mind, Indians became not sages but savages. Because it is savages that don't use the mind. These are three levels of consciousness. The savage, the beast, then the simpleton, the commoner, and then the sage, the liberated one. There is something common between the final level and the initial level. In both the levels, there is no mind. The savage does not use his mind. And the sage has gone beyond the mind. Are you getting it? In your attempt to become the sage, it is very easy to become the savage. And that's what happens to Indians. We drop the mind even without using the mind to its full potential. Even without reaching the limits of mind. We didn't follow the process of the sages. We just emulated their results. What was the process of the sages? They used their mind to the fullest extent. And then they reached the boundary of the mind. Hmm? They went through the entire journey. It was an arduous, painstaking journey. They, they paid every bit of the price. The commoners thought they can have it easily and cheaply. So they said, fine. If the final thing is that the mind is to be dropped, we will drop the mind. We will stop using the mind. So India stopped thinking. India stopped thinking. India started scoffing at logic. India made the intellect a dirty word. Hmm? What is better? Emotions are better. Blind belief is better. Superstitions are better. Thought is not good, logic is not good, rationality is not good. Because these are things of the mind. Rather I will go by my gut feeling. Now the one who goes by his gut feeling is a savage. Now you see where all these centuries of slavery came from. When you don't have technology, when you don't have knowledge, Obviously, you will fall prey to the marauders. How will you manage the aggressor? He has the power of thought and weapons and technology. He has been thinking. And you have been just breeding and believing. And you are smug in your belief that you are meditative and liberated people. Because you don't think. Even today, Indians relatively do not think. We do not use our minds to the fullest extent. We rely on trust. We rely on copying and emulation. We are afraid to dare and venture out. Our movie is copy from Hollywood. Even our YouTubers copy from American YouTubers. Our social influencers copy from them. Our podcasters copy from Joe Rogan. Our constitution has picked up bits and pieces from several constitutions of the world. At I am Ahmedabad, we had Harvard steps. There is a particular flight of steps called the Harvard steps. I found it very interesting. So that was the time when the movie Lagan was released. And it started having some connection with the Oscars. And everybody got very excited. 
So one of our professors, he said, what's the great deal? Why are you always looking for Western appreciation? 2002, that's when Lagan was released, the movie, Hindi movie Lagan. Hmm? And it was probably nominated for the Oscar. Something happened in relation to the Oscars. And people were talking. The whole thing was abuzz. And the professor came and scolded. He said, you slaves of the West, always looking for Western appreciation. So I said, sir, sir, one little thing, sir. More than half the cases you teach here are from Harvard and Stanford. And what is that thing called the Harvard stairs? And then you say that we should not be looking at the West. India just stopped thinking. India stopped being original. We bypass the mind. The thing is, Please appreciate the cardinal mistake. Even to go beyond the mind, you have to first of all use the mind to the fullest. There is no other way. You cannot just arbitrarily drop the mind. To go beyond life, first of all, you have to go fully through life. As they say, the way through is the way out. We don't think. We believe. We are one of the most superstitious people. Look at the number of gurus and babas proliferating and prospering. Think of India's share in intellectual property generation. How much original work is happening here? But we love to copy. When it comes to plagiarism, we are second to none. Think of your car models. Visit Europe or US and you will be surprised. You say, this one looks so much like the one I see on Indian roads. But the logo is different. How did that happen? Even think of the weapons that Indian army is using. Many of them are, even to manufacture weapons, you require thought. Where is thought? Where is logic? Where is rationality? Where is reason? Where is critical thinking? We just love to think of how we worship our leaders, political leaders. And if you want to critically analyze a particular leader, especially if he happens to be a darling of the masses, they won't listen. Because they don't want to think. They just believe. Our education must prepare the kid to question everything. To dare to inquire into everything. There should be no holy cows. There should be nothing so sacred that it cannot be questioned. People who hide their ignorance behind shallow questions irritate me. But there is another category of people who irritate me even more. Those who ask no questions at all. Those who just take life, you know. it is hot, yes, it is cold, maybe, who are you, do you exist, are you alive, are you an alien, a zombie, who are you, there is no individuality, you don't have a mind, you can't think, you can't question, you can't analyze, you can't reason, you can't compare. No, no, no. Dead. Wow. 
so two bits of literature from the hindi world are occurring to me at this moment one is chobe ji chale the chhabbe banne aur dube ban ke reh gaye so the fellow wanted to be bigger you see this is a progression we talked of three levels 2 4 and 6 2 is dube 4 is chobe and 6 is chhabbe so we were at the middle level the level of the simpleton the level of the commoner we wanted to be the sage chhabbe ji and what did we instead become the savage dube ji now i am not offending all the dubes apologies in advance it's just a metaphor and the other one is a popular song from one of the movies zindagi ki talash mein hum pahadi can never be far behind you know zindagi ki talash mein hum maut ke kitne paas aa gaye india's greatest fortune became its misfortune our philosophers our sages our gems and jewels we turned them into our misfortune that's what ails india similarly the body is not real now go and win medals in olympics the body is to be dropped i am not the body nice so you are a good 8 inches shorter than the average swede am i right the scandinavian country is the average height there i suppose is in excess of 6 feet and here 5 6 or something 5 5 that's how tall the average indian is how tall or how short or half a foot because i am not the body you see we are spiritual people we are not supposed to be the body so we top the charts when it comes to malnutrition because we are not the body heart attacks india i am not the body diabetes india i am not the body hmm the in denmark it's 511 india 55 the chinese used to be shorter than us at the time of independence even they have grown longer but we are not the body so why take care of the body all the women are suffering from anemia but they are not the body indian women are especially not the body it's just that they keep on producing more and more bodies 142 crore bodies but we are not the body you see average indian is 55 56 not the body these are the two things that we have been taught to stay clear of right tan and man i am not the mind and i am not the body i am atma i am the supreme self Now instead of becoming the supreme self you became the beast that's what we did to our sages and they are looking at us and beating their heads
thank you so much, Acharya ji, for this uh, thought-provoking session. Thank you for answering so many questions by the participants. It was very insightful, and we are all very grateful for the session. And uh, we all hope to you know, have the chance to have another session with you in the near future. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.